So, <clears throat> we have, well, I had a choice. I could either do two more tracks, basically just Mega Mix Mania and Drive Through Danger, but I thought I'd just elongate the experience for everybody and try and just get the two two cups out of this. That would be a bit of a laugh. Now, I'm going to lose a medium. Nah, I'll be fine. I, I'm, I was sitting here thinking, I've been bitching about Yaya Panda. But, like, it's a case of, do I want to play as a character I care about? I mean, this character's okay. And Baby T's okay. I don't know if I played as him yet. Uh, on screen and like you know it's like it's better to like celebrate characters you care about even Penta Penguin than like going look this is what I mean about this terrible annoying repetitive character and subjecting you all to it because it's like there's actually a load of really great characters and then there's fucking Yaya yeah, yeah, Panda I might let's see if she would just do something annoying if I click on her yeah, okay, that's nothing too triggering. Yeah, she's annoying me already. Um, who did I see earlier? I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do Baby T. Mm, this is important, okay? It's important. Yeah, let's just, let's just try Amy. Shut up. I don't know why I have so many of the skins for these people unlocked, but I don't have any for Yaya Panda, except obviously I hate playing as Yaya Panda. It's not weird. Shut up. Let's get a nice color. A nice color. Ugh, a nice color I have. Yeah, uh, the list. The list causes frames to drop. It's too many. The list have become too much. Mm, let's have some sort of... Yeah, let's have that green again. I like that green. I like that green. So, I, I've already forgotten. We're doing the desert one first. So, yeah. Here's a fun fact I didn't know about until recently. If you have an e-reader, you can just upload pretty much a load of documents. Some, some take PDFs and stuff on there. And there are websites dedicated that are basically free online libraries, but you can keep digital copies of the book forever for free. And like I've been really going into things like Project Gutenberg recently because I was like, I can either spend like quite a substantial amount of money on the Penguin Classics version on the Kindle store, which is literally the, the same but with a different forward sometimes. And um, you can just get it for free, some of the classics. If you're just looking at classics, there's a good chance it's going to be on there, but there's also quite a lot of good pulp fiction up there. So like sci-fi pulp from like the early eras and a lot of the classic um, Murder mystery. Some of the earlier um, Agatha Christie stuffs up there for free, and like there's some Poirot and stuff. And I was just like, okay, I'll look through these. Uh, started reading a load of sci-fi pulp because I've always wanted to get into it, but didn't know where to start and wasn't just going to randomly buy a sci-fi fiction novel. Got a friend who was telling me some about some places that I should check out. One about. They picked up in a charity shop for like 60p. That's like, oh, look at mine. That was like um, about a space dictator or something. It's like Conan got into space, but he's a dictator as well. It was really weird. I, I have to get the name off of him again because it's driving me nuts. But anyway, I first one I read was Samuel Delaney, Captives of the Flame. Now, I didn't really like it, which is kind of surprising because I thought I would really like Delaney. But this is like his second ever book, and it may be the reason it's free now is because he doesn't consider it like worth monetizing anymore. I, I don't know. Um, it was weird. 
it just felt like a lot of nothing happened really like um here's some characters they show no development or motivation whatsoever they exist basically in the same sense that like a Dungeons and Dragons character exists except they're basically avatars for people and then they lose all of the things that are described relatively quickly because um they all get turned into alien monsters halfway through spoilers for a book that came out ages ago and then it's just like then they swap bodies a few times fight a giant jellyfish and then uh, they're like oh yeah we win I guess and you're like oh. oh okay and that's that's it and you're just like oh okay and they have some really interesting stuff that happens and you're like oh I can see where this is going and it does not go there and I'm kind of disappointed because it just feels like, not like, oh, haha, we're subverting expectations. It just felt like, why does this character even exist? <laughs> like, you know, that, that kind of annoyed me. Uh, there were some characters where I was like, oh, they might be doing something with this character. And then they just did nothing with that character. And they were just like, oh, yeah, that's that character now. And unless they move on with that character later, that's, that's you know, if, unless they appear again in his other work. But... You know, like, I mean, not everything I read is perfect, and it's definitely better than things I write, so. Um, well, I don't know, my, my characters do have some motivations on complex, like, personality. Oh, 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 shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm losing. <laughs> uh, they're quite harder, like, the AI's a little harder on the new tracks. I bet you I get first on the rest of them now. The AI is really messed up in this game, where like the latest tracks, the AI is ramped up significantly, and then you go and you'll really see it. In the... So yeah, I started reading another one, which started off really well, and I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be cool. It's called Death, Wo Death World by Harry Harrison. I was like, oh yeah, this is really good. Starting off with loads of gun tension, yeah, it's going to be one of those cool, kind of really dodgy, like, um, uh, like action sci-fi things. Really cool. And it starts off really well, and then it just plunges into <laughs> space colonialism. I'm still really enjoying it, because it's kind of amusing, because it's very of the era. Like, you're talking literally, like, bland, self-insert protagonist is like... And his only thing is that he's a good gambler. Comes in and goes, Well, I say, you guys seem rather primitive in your nation. I, a foreigner, an outsider, who's obviously supposed to be Caucasian, is um, fully aware of your primitive practices and everything on this planet's trying to kill you. You're going to lose this battle and you're getting angry at me because of your primal savagery. Don't worry, though, I, the intellectual outsider, will help you brute savages. And it comes across like that a lot. <laughs> they even have an illustration of the rocket, and it's straight out of, like, the classic era of what space rockets were thought to look like. <laughs> you know, this is what the rockets will look like. And y you know the shape. The classic rocket shape, the V2 kind of style shape. And, like, it even has a kind of cringeworthy scene where they have, um... There's a female character called Meta, and she exists, and she's really interesting at first, and you think, oh, they're going to subvert the expectation of weak female, um... character that exists purely to be there, like, gee golly, sir, I don't know what you mean. You seem awful smart, though. Let me just be a sex doll. <laughs> like, you know? And then they go straight down that route, and you're like, oh, great. And she literally has a Marilyn Monroe haircut, and they're like, they spend most of their time explaining her physique, explaining how she's not like the other girls because she's strong and stupid rather than skinny and stupid. And they make a big point about it, like she's ditzy, she's a blonde. And then that, uh, one, where I got to at this point is he's like, I am a smart intellectual, just give me, like, 
quarters and I will resolve the problem with this world and make it livable for all of you. Oh. <laughs> and then he's, they're like, fine, do you want us to give you someone as an assistant? Because if you don't have somebody, you'll probably get murdered by the local flora and fauna because it's literally called Death World. The grass has poisonous hooks on it. It's... A neat setting, but it, and it feels really like janky and like you know, you're on a planet, everything's trying to kill you, even the grass, even the grass, even the grass, and you're like, oh, this is, I, I could work with this, and then it just kind of like, it does a little bit of like, shaming, the guy for being completely in, uh, ill-equipped for the t double gravity, and like the. Um, was it they put in there the double gravity everything trying to kill him and the, the like extreme weather patterns and they're like you're super weak you're equivalent to an eight-year-old in our society and then he just spends the whole time going oh these people are so like oh i don't need to take them seriously i'm going to condescend to them at every known possible thing and make them out to be idiots and it's like dude Right at the beginning one of these guys saved your dumb ass life and made you rich <laughs> like you know and, like, he did help a little bit. <clears throat> but, like, um, of course, the first thing they do to bring the girl back in the plot, the only girl you meet so far in the book, and they're literally, like, he's such a sleaze bag about it. Like, they're, like, he's, like, I think this character, this this girl that we already, it was inferred we had sex um, on the spaceship, and then she stopped talking to me because she's busy with her job and she's ashamed. Um, like, and he was really, for, uh, like, really forthcoming in the book about it as well. Um, he's like, oh, I think she should come. She should be my like assistant, right? And he's like, yeah. Um, why, why her? She's a space pilot. And he's like, oh, well, I think that because she's traveled around, she'll be able to understand what I'm trying to achieve more. And he gives all of this stuff. And then right at the end, you're like, so he's trying to like show that he's being mature about it. It's not. And then right at the end, he goes it doesn't help that she's quite pretty and you're like yes that's the reason you hire an assistant so and it essentially is where i left it off at this point was um it essentially said yeah so like workplace harassment you have to like we we're aware that you kind of had a thing going on with this guy and you don't want to talk to him anymore we're gonna like relieve you of all of your job all of the orders you were just given and disrupt our entire shipping uh, manifest because this guy who still doesn't get the idea that you don't want to talk to him anymore is forcing you to basically work in close proximity with him for the next whatever, you know? And it just screams, wow, the misogyny, it hurts. One night stand, oh, okay, I now can't stop harassing you and you've already pushed me away and literally beaten him up saying, look, dude, stop fucking bothering me. And he goes, oh, I like this one. She's going to be harder to subjugate. <laughs> That's what it feels like. And you're like, this was certainly written in an era, <laughs> like, you know, certainly written in an era. Le era problematique, <laughs> like, you know really pissing me off <laughs> and I, I always felt like oh I can take some dated bullshit space colonialism oh well, why are you even here you savages I'll teach you but first give me your most buxom women put them in isolation with me so I can basically force them to sleep with me alrighty and like the thing is like they give him such a good like character at the beginning they really set it off with a strong opening scene and you're like all right all right yeah i can see where this is going this is cool um and then it goes in a completely different direction and you're like oh i was expecting something way more actiony with a lot more gunfights and stuff and then it's just like yeah you're on this world shut up <laughs> space shit and you're like um okay yeah and then it just kind of goes down like, all these themes I just outlined and I'm like, oh, I was really expecting something a little more Doom. With a thing, with the cover art as it was, and the name being Death World, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to have some grindhouse Doom shit. 
Yeah. He's going to be going around. These people are going to be going around like Dread or Strontium Dog, and they're just going to be such a, like, grungy. And, like, the whole the setting is so grungy cyberpunk. I was just, like, in love with the setting straight away. And then they just go... They just... Like, the characters are just such a product of their time. And the main character is a gambler, and he earns a lot, wins a lot of money, and they get away, and you're sat there like, oh, I know what they're going to do. He'll get away, and he'll spend his money, then he'll need more money, and they'll have to do another job or something. That'll be the thing. Nah, he just goes, oh, I want to come back to your world that's known as the world of death. They say, are you sure you'll probably die? And you'll go, huh, stupid savages think that I'm not strong enough for this. Oh, bravado, bravado. Gets there and he pretty much gets wrecked immediately. And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost like you weren't born and raised on this planet. That's literally double gravity. They take off so fast when they fly away that he passes out. <laughs> and he's... He goes blind for a short period of time, and they're like, oh yeah, we forgot to tell you, we've got one of these normies on here who can't handle high acceleration because he's not from a double gravity planet. And you're just like, they, they do a great thing of wrecking the pro tag every five seconds, which is great because he's such a snarky git. <laughs> you're just like, good. <laughs> like, you know, I hope he gets fucking murdered by a bug creature. And then they just wake him up and say, they, they resurrect him and say, like, oh, you got wrecked, son. <laughs> like, you know, and he's like, shut up. <laughs> Space colonialism. It just really feels like that, you know. They're kind of, you can imagine him, one of those guys from the Fallout posters, like 50-style Fallout posters, where they're like, oh, Tony Jim, I've come to your primitive planet to teach you the ways of white men. <laughs> Look at me, perfect fucking 50s man. <laughs> and you're just like, uh, <laughs> you know, no, make it stop, it hurts. <laughs> so, you know, when you go back and read Lovecraft and you see what his cat's named, <laughs> it's that kind of thing, and you're just like, uh, <laughs> why? Can't we have the good and just, like, try and edit out the bad, or is that just a bit mean to the original writer? <laughs> just some things don't age the right way. Anyway, I, sp I spent three races talking about a book that no one's ever read, and is now free on Project Gutenberg. Check it out. Or don't. It's up to you. I'm going to go start checking out some sick... That's my cat. <laughs> I'm going to check out some sick noir uh, detective novels and pulp and westerns and stuff at some point as well, just to have a little look around them. I can't imagine them being any more, you know, like... You know, I, I can deal with it, but something about this really brushed me up the wrong way. It was just something about the way it was pushed. Maybe it's just because, um, I don't know, it's me, it's a personal thing, I don't know. Uh, anyway, like, um, I was enjoying it. I love the aesthetic of that kind of grungy cyberpunk 80s impressions of what the future will be like, you know. <clears throat> They're popping out cassette recorders and stuff, and the flight tapes are still tapes, and you're just like, oh, it's great when we thought tapes were the peak, <laughs> you know? And then we all move to digital media, and it's like, I want a big chunky thing to shove into a chunky, ugly plastic dash <laughs> that looks like shit. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> Something about that aesthetic, man. But you are talking to a guy who still enjoys retro wave and stuff, so, like, yeah, you know. Gonna have that on it. Just lols. So that was a whole cup of me ranting about that. <laughs> oh man, what? Speaking of weird things to talk about over this, me and my mate recently were talking about weird music we play and like, um, or oh, like. He, was, he plays music when he's at work for his um, office and like they have to deal with listening to his music and he like plays really weird country and western things where it's literally, you know the guys, guys in cowboy hats sat on like custom choppers with like that very specific hell yeah-esque kind of font. With the big vignette around the side, everything sepia tone, and it's called songs like called "Where I'm Come From" <laughs> and "Oh Yeah, Bury Me in My Boots," <laughs> and it's just like, 
yeah, <laughs> you know, that kind of one, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, I love that this is a thing. Guys in cowboy hats with their arms crossed with, like, the Guy Fieri tattoos, like, as in Guy Fieri's shirt, but tattoos. And I was, like, <laughs> giving him suggestions, like, Cadillac 3 and stuff, which are, like, genuinely, I really like Cadillac 3 and, like, uh, Blackberry Smoke and uh, Blackstone Cherry are less country and more, like, blues, aren't they? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we listen to them, but we listen to some real dank shit as well. <laughs> and I'm just like, fair enough. So then we got on to talking about, like, Jamaican dance hall playlists with, like, Yellow Man and Elephant Man in. <laughs> you know Elephant Man? He has a song about not trusting anybody, any stranger with his kid's safety. It's hilarious. Well, it's actually, like, <clears throat> it's supposed to raise awareness about, like, Oh, okay. Well, that was the end anyway, so. I hope it doesn't do that halfway through a cup. <laughs>